American tourism in Havana is something that has not been seen in a very long time, but it appears that that is about to change. This uh, building was converted into the, uh, into the museum. One thing Americans will find are expert tour guides who speak excellent English. Others have been specially trained in Russian, French, and other languages. Tourists will find that there are virtually no restrictions on where they can go and what they'll see, but most choose to travel by bus. The government here spent $5 million to acquire 80 luxury tour buses from Spain, complete with bars, bathroom, and air conditioning. More purchases are planned. They take visitors to Revolutionary Plaza, which is the focal point for national rallies and speeches by Fidel. The statue of Jose Marti is there, too, as are giant murals of communist heroes, both Russian and Cuban. Another new attraction in Havana features the yacht Castro and his men sailed in from Mexico to Cuba to start their revolution. A United States tank given to the Cubans by the North Vietnamese for use at the Bay of Pigs is there, and so are other memorabilia of the revolution. Old Havana is another attraction with its colonial architecture, but its appearance is drab. Most buildings look as if they could use some paint or sandblasting. This, more than anything else in Cuba, is symbolic of the hard economic times this nation faces because of a low world price for sugar and massive welfare programs that cost more than the government can afford. Havana has more than 20 nightclubs, but the premier is the old Tropicana. In 1947, the Tropicana still puts on a dazzling show, but without the gambling and naughty but nice atmosphere. Three nights a week are reserved for workers judged outstanding by their union. And perhaps as an appeasement to the Russians who provide up to $4 million a day in aid for Cuba, a couple of dances are distinctly Soviet in nature. The Cubans are currently building 59 hotels all over the island in hopes of handling up to 300,000 tourists by 1980 and the existing hotels are 90% full most of the time. Boyer Palmer and his wife Fern from Minneapolis were two of the first Americans to get into Cuba after the travel ban was lifted, and they want to organize group tours from the United States. Do you think Americans are going to like this type of a vacation uh, when it's available to them? I think you will find two types of Americans. Uh, the one type uh, will be satisfied with the sun and the sea, where the other type will make the one trip and probably say there's not enough other activities to keep them interested, and they will get probably enough of going on the tours. There's no question the Cubans want Americans to visit because they need the hard currency, but they also are wondering how their presence and demands will affect this rigidly controlled communist society. Mike Siemens, Channel 4 News, Havana.